Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, this month I would like to show you something that I developed actually many months ago and I planned it to be a video edited by uh, Logicraft RS, my, my buddy uh, that has been uh, editing other videos as well recently such as the 5x5 door, uh, the very fast one is the one I'm talking about, um, but that didn't really work out, he doesn't have much time. This is a world that I prepared for him to do it, and I figured I would just uh, show you this really cool thing I built many months ago in this world. So what this is, is a 1x1 one one pixel display. So each pixel uh, is one block high and one block wide. And I've shown you these on my channel before, the last video of which was three years ago, uh, somewhere back in 2013, I posted a fix to make this work in 1.5 and later versions because uh, repeaters powering pistons through a block would also update the piston below directly and that caused for some different mechanics. Um, so I updated that then but I kind of left the question open about how you would uh, find which repeaters to power to get the exact thing you want. Anyway, before I move on to technicalities back there. I will show you this thing in action. Uh, I'll show you my favorite one first. <laughs> you may have seen this on Twitter a little while ago. It takes a few moments to load, unfortunately. But there we go. Beautiful cat. This is 20 by 20, by the way. The, the larger the display, the longer it will take. Well, namely the... I think it's the, the longer, so... If you put it like this, the wider the display, the longer it takes to update. I did make it so that all the pixels update at about the same time, so it makes for a synchronous transition. Uh, and I'm having some lags here. Wow, that was pretty bad. Went down to 6 FPS. Uh, so, if you can't see, this is supposed to be a car. Um, so what you may have noticed, or may not have noticed, is that the transition um, was in one go. So it rendered everything at the same time uh, without resetting the display in between. And that's another feature I added in this version of the display. Um, so let's move on to the first thing I added, which is a little uh, piece of redstone that converts pixel input, so saying which pixels you want to be uh, out or in, uh, to which repeater should be powered behind the pistons. And that circuit, my friends, is in another part of the world, however, of course, also in the big contraption, but I will just demonstrate to you what it does. So we have a small setup of pistons, uh, six pistons tall, because it does the same thing for every slice. And I will simulate passing a one tick pulse to these inputs by placing a redstone torch on the side of these redstone blocks. Now if you remember correctly, um, what we had is we had a repeater powering uh, up here. So this top input would power only one piston. That's important here because the circuit I have here only works in that case. If There's also the case where you have it only powering the bottom piston. And you would start it like that. Well, that doesn't quite work. But if the bottom input only powers one piston, then you have to kind of reverse it. Um, anyway, so it was like this. So each repeater generally powers two pistons, and the same goes for all of these torches. Um, so let me just reset it now. Didn't really have to do that, did I? So I uh, isolated a small part of this circuit. This is 20, 20 uh, pieces tall. This is only six, so let's say I want to have the mill two. No, that's a bad example. The this pixel here, and I want this pixel here. I want those to change. So I will enter that. So the the one before last on the top. I don't know how to say that at the moment. And that one, and that means that these are the inputs that we want to power. So two down, then one, two, three. The order does not matter as long as you don't do it at the same time. And you see that it worked perfectly. So that's kind of how the circuit works. I won't go exactly into detail about how this works, but it just uses uh, a load of XOR gates that are kind of connected to each other. 
Um, so that's really cool. That's the first part. And then we have some RAM, which we'll, I will get into in the next clip. So the RAM in the center of the circuit, it just stores, in this case, three images. This is not required at all, but I thought I would include it. Uh, I spent a while trying to make it fast so that the pass through of the signal would go quickly. And I think I managed. I had some much, much slower versions, but I'm really happy with this design. So the way this RAM works is we have the read on the back, and this is one module, this blue bit here. Oh, my keyboard is doing weird stuff. So we have the, I mean the write on the back, and it writes with a repeater lock to this repeater here, which powers through this redstone dust into this comparator here, which is on subtractor mode, such that turning these repeaters off will read from that data. And that's how the RAM works, and then it just passes through these lines, and we have the same thing on the other side, right here. So one block lower to the le to the left, we have another one like this. And by staggering staggering it up and down a little bit like that, we're able to have these uh, in a very dense space, very near each other. So each pixel is represented by a two by two area of the circuit vertically. Uh, so that's the RAM. And the next part of the circuit is this bit, which I think is really, really cool. All right, so this next circuit acts as a buffer between the data inputs, which are these blue redstone pieces right here. Um, and they each update these T-buds. Oops, uh, so these T-buds. And these T-buds, they store the data that's not on the display. Uh, so let's say that this redstone turns on, it would power, extend this t bot here, this piston, and that means that something here in this circuit will change, and that it's ready to update the pixel on the display. Uh, however, if it turns off again, it will retract this t bot again, as you can see if I update it, it extends, if, if I turn it back off, it will retract again. And that means that it wouldn't change the pixel, so it doesn't have to change the pixel twice, or it doesn't power things twice, because that's all not needed, because powering a piston twice with a one tick pulse is, in this case, fairly pointless. And that's why we don't have to reset between images. So um, this circuit here is actually split up in two parts. Uh, we have this first part here, let me just mark it blue now for some reason. This is just a T-bud. There are there's one T-bud for every uh, two by two area. Oh, there goes my keyboard again. Um, so let's do it like this. We have T-bud there and there, and they are staggered in a way that makes them not interfere. And it took me a very long time to get to this point where they don't interfere. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, so this other part here consists of uh, a load of one tick monostables and they actually after that will reset all of these t -buds. yeah they're t -buds, that's right um, so how do the t reset properly uh, I have a huge amount of repeaters going to the left here couldn't find a much better way of doing this unfortunately and I only update the piston arms. So let's say that this piston here is extended, uh, then if I update it, this one, the arm, which doesn't exist here, it won't update, but if I update it here, it will. And that's how they're all reset. And what happens on this side is, uh, we send a fairly short signal to turn off all of these repeaters in, in order, and they turn off this redstone dust, which uh, lets this torch here turn on for one tick because it's powering itself and that sends a signal through this block and into the output right here which powers one signal input which powers two pistons or well the top actually powers just one um, so this torch is not only powered by this repeater but it's also powered by a torch behind this block I can show you that right there we have a torch this torch not only powers 
this redstone, keeping it on so that it wouldn't power if the T bot isn't activated, but it also completes the T bot. As you can see, it powers the repeater here, which buds the piston. And that is how this whole thing works. So I just explained actually many days of progress. I actually have like six or seven versions of this thing uh, in about, I don't know, six, seven minutes. And um, yeah, so that's very dense information. I hope you could follow. But the main reason for this video is that I want to make one by one displays a thing in Minecraft. They are a thing, but I want them to be used. And that's why I decided to uh, give the community something to work with and make these displays work. And what I mean by that is this circuit here at the back can be hooked up to any logical component that contains graphical data. And it will process that data to show it on the display. And for that, you don't even need the RAM I have set up. But of course, you can just use it as you, as you like. Mm, I just hope that this gives everybody a tool to enjoy one by one displays in, well, higher resolution than we're used to. And uh, yeah, I hope you find a use it for it yourself. If you like doing logic things, computers, CPUs, GPUs, anything can be used on this display, even though it is pretty slow. I just hope you find this really cool as well. I can show you the other two images I have. They're fairly boring, but this is the last one called random squares. I did this with world edit on the back. And it's uh, all in the RAM, by the way. These three images I showed you, they are stored in the RAM. And this last one is actually the input from the back. This is a test because it powers every single input on display to change only the bottom line. And that's because each input essentially propagates the first pixel that's changed because the top input only powers one piston uh, to the bottom in this case. So if I reset it now, and here you'll see what I just explained to you in action. So if I reset the display, we should see all the redstone inputs here turn off, powering all of the T-buds. This happens in order, of course. And it's, as you can see, very laggy. And after that, we get a signal going through here, utilizing all of those signals and powering the display. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then all the T-buds reset. And it's reset. And there we go. That's everything. There's not that much to it, but it's just, I think it's a little complicated to understand. And, well, as I said, this took a little while to develop. Um, but once again, I really hope you like this little build, little contraption. I hope you like this video, and if you found it interesting, there's more of this kind of content on my channel, so then you can subscribe for future updates. I post a video about every two, three months right now, I think. But, yeah. I think I promised to increase my upload rate many times. I won't do it again because it's unlikely that I will be able to. Um, so there are a few more things I wish to talk about. One of those things is what is going on uh, IRL for me. I am applying for university or have already done that many months ago uh, in the United Kingdom in England and I plan to study there. So that's coming next September. I'm very much looking forward to that. And the other thing I would like to talk to you about is uh, the type of videos I upload to this channel. I don't have any other channel that I upload videos to, but I am I would actually really like to upload some other videos, such as uh, Osu gameplay that I do. I play a lot of Osu. I've done this for over three years now, and uh, I've actually wanted to upload some videos about that for a while. Um, the other thing which I am considering is to upload a little review or recommendation video for the phone that I'm using because I really really like it. Uh, in, in case you're wondering, it's the OnePlus 2. 
You may have heard about it, you may have not, but I think it's a really great phone, even though it's actually already over a year old. Anyway, I think it's really good. And in the next few days, there's actually the OnePlus 3 coming out, which should do about the same things. So it won't be a very high quality video, but if you're interested in seeing that as well, uh, for both of these, please leave your comments down below. And uh, with that being said, I will see you in the next video.